Damus Force presents Let's Talk Gaming, the show where we give you a rundown of the latest and greatest games on the market for your viewing pleasure. My name is Mehdi Hassan, and today we'll be talking about Ubisoft's newly opened beta for a fast-paced, non-stop action battle royale game, Hyperscape. Now I gotta give a disclaimer. We here at Damus are ballsy. We don't take, take no from anyone. Damus Force believes that the games can speak for themselves and you can count on us to bring you an honest review every single time. Doesn't matter if it's good or bad. Well, in the case for Hyperscape, we went in fully expecting it to be another mediocre game in an oversaturated market. But after playing it ourselves, it turned out to be a really unique experience. Finally, after all this time, an actual fast-paced battle royale game. But it also comes with a fair share of problems, which might negatively affect your time with it. So guys, strap in, get ready, grab a bowl of freshly fried Muri, and let's just jump right into this. The thing that immediately caught my attention is its style. There is one thing Hyperscape does really well, and it's PRESENTATION! Upon launching the game for the first time, it gives you a trailer showing everything you need to know about the game with synthwave music, quirky dialogue, and fast cuts. After that, it drops you in a training area to play around with said features. And trust me, for a game that's focused on efficiency, it has a ton of features. Although I would say the main hub is kinda dark and bland looking, but that doesn't go for the actual game cause holy smackaroonies this map looks good! It's so vibrant and colorful, I fell in love the first time I saw it. As I fell closer towards the earth in my deployment pod, with the hype inducing synthwave blaring in my ears, it was like strapping myself in for a roller coaster. I was never so excited to drop in a BR game before, and this game manages to make it fun! This kind of detail goes into the level design as well. You gotta run across rooftops, hop through windows, escape into the sewers with style. Even on the low graphic- Whoa, what the hell?! <laughs> Just kidding, it still looks great. There is no way to describe how refreshing a totally urban environment like this feels after being stranded on an island for the 10 billionth time. Hell, that style extends to the red zones as well. The map physically changes with time. The environment starts losing color, and in the final stages the buildings start to break apart. This both helps you to escape the zone easier while being cool as heck to watch. Also if you haven't noticed, the name of the game is Speed. Apex Legends was made to be a faster version of PUBG, and now Hyperscape is a faster version of Apex. Whoa! Although I don't want to put it under that label because Hyperscape actually does a lot of things differently than most battle royales. Now playing this game was a strangely nostalgic experience because its style reminded me of the old school arena shooters like Quake. Actually this game feels a lot like Quake Battle Royale. In those games you move fast and hit hard. The name of the game was devastating your enemies one by one while being the world's smallest fighter jet. That style of fast paced action feels lost now in the gaming industry. The only one that comes to mind in recent times is the Doom reboot. But now, Hyperscape brings it back baby! You don't sprint as fast as you did in Quake, but it compensates that with a double jump and jump pad strewn throughout the map. Which brings us to the big new things introduced by Hyperscape. First, the weapon merging system. In almost every battle royale game, you're focused on finding attachments to trick your guns out for an advantage. And it's a whole laundry list of stuff. Muzzle brakes, sights, suppressors, grips, foregrips, stocks, stabilizers, it's a pain to get right. But in Hyperscape, they thought, you know what? Throw all that out the window. Merge gun together to make more gun. It's as simple as picking up a duplicate of your equipped gun. That's it. The first levels are primarily focused on magazine size, but the ultimate level, level 4, increases both magazine size and damage. It's not a huge boost in damage, but the game's focus is staying on the move, so you're gonna miss. A lot. Some weapons have quirks as well. The shotgun and sniper need to be manually cycled every shot. So if you fire your gun and switch too fast, the next time you whip it out, it will cycle the spin shot first, which means instant death. The sniper has another quirk. All the other weapons increase magazine size per level, but the sniper increases damage. The magazine size is always stuck to 3 rounds, even on the highest level, which gives the player on the receiving end of your bullets a fighting chance. But oh ho ho, those 3 rounds go by quick, so you better hit your shots and make them count. And might I say, some of these weapon designs are creative as heck. It feels like I'm playing Borderlands again. 
Next up are the perks. The perks got your basic stuff, healing, armor, dash, super jump, but it also has unique stuff like a metal hamster ball that allows you to bounce around the map while also taking zero damage. It also has stuff like erecting a 14 feet wall in front of you. My favorite is the slam, which can damage enemies and also allow you to jump over buildings. The perk system is not based on class, but to your specific playstyle. It's a fun dynamic that melts together with the gameplay. Sick! Then we got the new and innovative revive system. In the game, when you die, you don't actually die. You turn into a ghost. A shadow who can run around the map while being totally invisible. While you're a ghost, you can ping enemies and feed your teammates valuable intel. But there's a catch. There are no specific respawn towers or stuff like that. You can only revive your teammates from the bodies of your fallen enemies. Metal. After dying, the enemy's body turns into a respawn point, where an alive character has to hold down a button to revive you, which, in a fast-paced game like this, stopping is a massive risk. You might think that this is overpowered, but it solely depends on how skilled your teammates are. Can your teammate take on a 1v3 situation and come out on top? If they can, then give that guy a medal cause he's a lifesaver. Literally. I love this. This system is not focused on in-game timers or power-ups. It's solely based on the player's skill. And finally, Crown Rush. In other battle royales, your primary objective is game ending every other team of 99 players and come out on top. But in Crown Rush, you got a secondary objective. At the final zone of the game, a crown is dropped from the sky. The team that can grab and hold on to the crown for 45 seconds outright wins the game. But alas, grabbing the crown also puts a price on your head, as every other team that's left alive rushes towards you with great vengeance and furious anger. So make sure you keep a cool head and not get overwhelmed. This is also a welcome change. No more does the last ring turn into a campathon on how long teams can sit in one place. This new mode encourages aggressive play. Actually, it's kinda impossible to properly camp in this game. Because of the advanced movement system and tons of jump pads strewn throughout the map, you can up the ante and punish the campers being the lifeless losers they really are. Some other things to mention are the small changes to the battle royale genre that makes the game much simpler to play. The main way of entry is breaking glass windows which glow in an orange hue. If someone has entered a building, the glass will be broken so you'll be able to know which building they're in. The game has no aim punch, which at first we thought was an inconvenience because it would help slow the enemy down. But the game doesn't want to slow down. This was a deliberate choice that actually makes sense. And the speed doesn't stop in game either. The game runs on Vulcan, so it runs smooth like butter. It's really, really well optimized. Unlike their other game. <laughs> and lastly for the pros is just, this is probably the most pleasant experience I've had while playing a battle royale. In every other battle royale game, you're always scouring for loot for an hour, winning out fights by the skin of your teeth, only to get one tapped by some sniping loser camping on top of a f***ing mountain. But it's surprising to me how Hyperscape innovated on the genre by taking more things out of the game. It's really funny when you think about it, and I like to say, Hyperscape brings together a more refined version of the battle royale genre while trying out new things of its own. I know a lot of people still like the slow, realistic pace of PUBG, but this game is not trying to be that. It's a new game that's trying new things in an oversaturated genre like Battle Royale. So I gotta give props for that. But now, let's look at the cons. And boy oh boy, there's a few things that really grinds my gears, enough to taint the whole experience. Bugs. Tons of bugs. Animation jank. False key inputs, non-existent hitboxes, dying because of some bullshit pulled by the game itself. It has connectivity issues too. Players skip across the screen, shots completely missing due to network issues, sometimes getting into a lobby takes a long time and sometimes you get kicked for no reason. One time I got stuck in a solo match after dying, and in order to quit that lobby I had to alt F4 the game. There was also this huge problem we faced on launch day that pissed everyone off and almost made us drop this game. On the first day of release, we were not able to invite our friends to a lobby. A battle royale game where you can't invite your friends on launch day. Way to kill the buzz for your newly anticipated title Ubisoft. Secondly, the main hub. This game doesn't have a straight up menu system. 
Well, it does for the settings and stuff, but when you launch the game, it takes you to a main hub where you have to interact with the matchmaking in-game. Now, I gotta say, it looks pretty cool. I understand what they were going for, but it's a pain to navigate. I spent at least 5 minutes looking for the tutorial gate, which was behind everything else in view. I'm sure a lot of us would prefer the option to launch into a text-based menu instead of a hub. It's a cool idea, but I wish it was an option. And to the weapons, the grenade launchers are overpowered as hell! They literally have zero splash damage drop-off, and no direct hit bonus. If you run into one inside a building or a stairwell, ho ho ho, get ready to get your ass blasted out of existence! The DTAP pistol is a literal aimbot gun. In its current state, it can track enemies while doing more damage than a freaking minigun! So jump around all you want, those bullets are gonna track you down like bees. <coughs> Remember when I said this game was like an arena shooter? Arena shooter weapons are mostly hit scan, and the explosive weapons have damage fall off, so you have to be somewhat accurate with it. But nope, not here. Also, instead of the impact grenade launcher thing, I wish they added a rocket launcher like in TF2 or Quake. That would perfectly fit this game, I'd imagine. I'm sure these weapons will get nerfed soon because in their current state, they're a pain to deal with. They don't fit this game at all, in my opinion. Now on the perk side, the mines are the most annoying thing ever conceived by a Ubisoft employee. They are homing missiles that you can't outrun unless you have the slam and they take off a quarter of your health. But wait, you can shoot to destroy them, right? Yeah, only if you're shroud. And you can dish one out in under 10 seconds every time. So if you manage to get into a firefight, just drop one to guarantee a solid win. Unfair as heck. The footsteps are another issue. I really like that you can hear them clearly, but when it comes to the vertical levels, like if they're on the roof or at the bottom floor of you, it's not really that accurate. Most games do it really well nowadays, and I expect them to fix it soon. Now, one of the flagship things about this game is that it's directly integrated with Twitch. It's a big thing for the game because the viewers of a streamer can affect the gameplay directly. The viewers can vote for certain events like the medkit event, the supply crate event, infinite ammo event, but the most appalling one is the low gravity event. More like no gravity event. <laughs> if you are unfortunate enough to use a slam during this event, well good luck and have fun visiting the moon cause you ain't coming down anytime soon. And the last one, which persists from Apex and is still a roaming issue with the battle royale genre as a whole, getting third partied. Getting third partied basically means a third team jumping into your two team battle, reaping all the rewards of your hard work. I mean, just imagine, you're fighting this other team, you're all jumping around, dodging bullets and hopping off buildings and such, and you win the battle by the skin of your teeth with a sliver of HP left. Only for some numbnut to appear out of nowhere to wipe out your entire team. All that hard work, all that loot you've accumulated, all of it gone to some coward who didn't deserve it. Because this game is hectic and the map is quite small, this issue is amplified in Hyperscape, and it's not totally Ubisoft's fault. There are many suggestions on how this could be fixed. My opinion is maybe after killing a guy, your character regenerates all health. Kinda like a berserker aspect. I think it could lend to a more aggressive play, which of course is the name of the game. So, in the end, Hyperscape has the vigor to try out new things and challenge the battle royale genre. And I'm sure that they can fix all these cons by the time the full release happens. For that, I'm really looking forward to this game. As someone with much respect of the old school arena shooters, this game is a love letter to that genre. But I'm sure it can be done way better. And we here at Deimos will be keeping an eye on Hyperscape. Thanks for tuning into Deimos Force. If you enjoyed this review, make sure to leave a like and subscribe because there will be more coming like this soon. This was Mandy from Deimos Force. Thanks for watching, and I'll see y'all next time.